Before we get into the video, make sure y'all hit that like button, subscribe if you're new. I mean, come on, what are you doing? If you're not subbed to me by now, my content is fire from stop motions, news videos, reviews, music occasionally. All my social media accounts are linked down below. And now, let's get straight to it. Okay, so we've got a little bit of news to talk about on this Tuesday. So first thing first here, we have Rise of the Beast, Blu-ray, DVD, and digital Amazon listings here on their website. You have DVD for Rise of the Beast, $25.99, Blu-ray plus digital, $31.99, 4K slash UHD plus digital, $37.99, and Prime Video, $19.99. So, these things are starting to roll out more and more. The pre-orders all across the internet. There were the Target listings a day or two ago that I covered. Uh, now we have some Amazon Prime and uh, a few other new editions. I think the uh, 4K Plus Digital and the Blu-ray Plus Digital is a new listing. I don't, I don't remember that in the Target ones, but don't quote me on that. But, yeah, we don't have a release date on these yet, but considering the movie goes up on, I think, streaming July 11th, I'm sure the DVDs aren't too far behind, but I'm not an expert on how this stuff goes. I, I honestly don't even really pay attention to this stuff that much. I just started sort of paying attention to it with Rise of the Beast here, so... There you go with that. Yet another interview has dropped with Stephen Cappell Jr., this time with Deadline, and he confirms once more that he is in talks to direct the sequel to Rise of the Beast, which is obviously going to involve Rise of the Beast, or uh, not Rise of the Beast, G.I. Joe, I should say, and he talked about stuff being off Earth in a video I covered yesterday in a separate interview Stephen Cappell Jr. did, so things are definitely starting to ramp up for the sequel. I don't I don't know when we're gonna get an official announcement i'm probably guessing sometime next year or something i'm thinking this whole promo thing for the sequel is just so uh people get more hyped to go out and go see rise of the beast in theaters right now as opposed to waiting until J july 11th or they should have just waited another week or two what I mean is wait another week or two before announcing the J July 11th streaming date. Or they could have just easily pushed it till like uh, later on this year, September or October or something like that. Similar to what they did with Top Gun Maverick. But nope, it seems like Paramount just wants to be a bunch of dummies this time around. So hopefully it does get at the box office. Via French site Mania Toys Collector, we have an inbox look of Retro Transformers the Movie Perceptor. This is the G1 Perceptor figure re-released this time around. And uh, does it have a new head sculpt? No, it's, I think it's just the face-plated thing. But there it is in box. Another one to add to the 1986 movie G1 reissues. And the last thing I want to cover in this video... We have a ton of new pre-orders that just dropped a couple hours ago at the time of this recording. We have in the Studio Series Age of Extinction Grimlock re-release under the Buzzworthy branding, so that's going to be a Target exclusive. You got Ironhide and Prowl 1986 movie 2-pack. I covered the leak on Prowl a few days ago, but this Ironhide is new. You got some blast effects. The chest up in there is all destroyed for Ironhide and Prowl. I do think these were done a bit lazy. I don't know, I think some smoke effects on the faces or something to really bring the whole, oh, I'm dying, I'm, my server's going offline type feel and look to them. But this is all right, I guess. I do like the purple blast effects. Um, I think the use of the solid plastic and painting the windows blue as opposed to the crippling clear plastic that uh, all collectors really don't like to deal with on these joints. Uh, I think that's a good touch. I hope we get that with more Generations figures and this eventually becomes the norm in the next few years or <laughs> hell, even next year. Um, but yeah, not a bad two-pack, but a little bit lackluster. And I'm glad that an Age of Extinction Grimlock is getting re-released for those of you that missed out on it. It's a pretty great leader class. I don't have it. I don't plan on getting it because I don't really collect uh, Baver Studio Series stuff like that anymore. But uh, And then the last one here is an Army Builder pack. We really don't get that a whole lot with Transformers, believe it or not, even though there's a ton of Army Builders they could do. And it seems like... The designers are finally tapping into that more than before. 
Because in the past, you know, we've had the sweeps, we've had Brunt, which you could which you could use as a Decepticon clone trooper. Um, that totally <laughs> that totally came out wrong. I meant Decepticon clone. That's a trooper, not actual clone trooper. But anyway, um, you got the Slammer drone that could be fudged and finessed as an auto trooper. But now we have official auto troopers. Uh, what I plan to do is use these new ones, get a couple of those auto troopers, then get some of the slammer ones and use those as like tank, super duper souped up versions of the auto troopers. I think that would make for some pretty cool uh, photography and stop motions. But other than the auto trooper, and the one thing that I do want to mention about the auto trooper is this is uh, labeled as animated universe, but there is also a Kiss Players alternate head up in there for the auto trooper. This is absolutely insane. When the designers said everything is on the table, they really seem to mean everything is on the table because we actually have KISS players represented in two th in the year 2023 in the Legacy Generations line, people. Think about that for at least a split second. That is absolutely insane and kind of amazing. Uh, I do like the design of this head sculpt, even though KISS players is probably one of the most stupidest ideas ever in the Transformers uh, brand, but... The option is pretty cool. It is a cool head sculpt. I think, you know, army building it, having different heads on there would be pretty cool. You got the Seeker drone here, which is basically just a dollar store Thundercracker. So not much to talk about there. You got a Quintesson soldier with an alternate head, which looks pretty cool, even though I'm not too clean too keen on collecting Quintessons, but I do have Alpha, Alpha Q from Transformers Energon, because I absolutely love that character. Uh, so I don't know, maybe I'll keep those, maybe I won't, but the G2 soldiers here for Jixus, uh, this is pretty great. Having some members of the Jixus army now is freaking awesome. Uh, this is a really cool multi-pack, except for the Seeker, even though, you know, you can use that for a lot of stuff. It's pretty cool, actually. Um, the Seeker is the weakest part of this pack, I'd say, but everything else is pretty cool. Uh, you get Quintesson Trooper, Jixus Trooper, and Auto Trooper. Sign me up. I wouldn't be surprised if they re-released Brunt at some point as a Decepticon clone. Um, or a Decepticon... Are they called Decepticon clones? I can't even remember the name off the top of my head right now. This is a cool four-pack. I do want to get at least two of them, but, you know... It's a pretty expensive way of army building. It's $80 for uh, each set. So who knows what I'm going to do about that. Let me know down in the comments below. Are you guys picking up this four pack? Any of the other buzzworthy stuff that was revealed today? What do you guys think about the Rise of the Beast sequel already being in production? And how do you guys feel about Rise of the Beast coming out on streaming so soon when it just got released in theaters? Let me know. Let me know down below. And I'll catch you all in the next video. Bye.